Hey everyone, today I'm going to do some general maintenance on the Dyson V11 torque drive. Just because it's cordless and bagless doesn't mean it's a maintenance-free appliance. In order to keep it running like new, every now and again it does need to be cleaned out to ensure it's going to operate properly. I'm going to go a little bit deeper than the manual calls for. You don't need to do every step I'm going to conduct, but I'm going to make it available to you. So if you choose to do exactly what I'm going to do, you're going to see how it's done. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this. Let's get started. I find before I start disassembling it on the bench, it'd probably be a good idea to empty the contents of the bin before things get messy. I've got the bin emptied out now. Whatever's left in there is pretty much what I'm stuck with during the cleaning process. That's to be expected. So we're pretty much ready to go. We'll start the disassembly now. Simply pushing in this tab marked with the number one shown here will allow you to pull the whole assembly forward and detach it as shown. We'll be cleaning these two pieces separately. While supporting the base of the vacuum cleaner, turning the filter and pulling back, we're able to remove the entire filter cartridge. Notice how extremely filthy this cartridge is on the outside. You might be surprised if you've never removed yours before. As we turn this around, you could barely see that the sink symbol for washing is legible through the filter element. Inside still clean, so it hasn't gotten past the inside of the filter. But we're going to have to clean this separately as part of our process today. Here's a close-up look of the metal mesh element inside. I see no major obstructions to speak of, but this will be blown out as part of the cleaning process. Here are the four torque screws that hold on the front of the unit. I'm going to be removing these to do more in-depth cleaning inside the unit. This is not part of the standard cleaning procedure. It's something I'm going to be demonstrating today in this video. For those who are doing this, however, the size of the head will be a T8. As expected, we could see that it's absolutely filthy in there. Now, without removing this, we can use compressed air to clean through this entire system without having separated these two parts. However, I chose to do that so we're able to see exactly what's going on inside. I'm not advocating for or encouraging people to do this, and it may in fact void your warranty. But you do get to see how to do this and what it does look like inside the unit. So I'm demonstrating this for you. Again, I don't encourage this, but we can see how much dirt is impacted in this unit uh, even during normal operation this part is extremely unpleasant and also mildly disgusting so make sure you wear a mask also make sure the can air doesn't blow out that gasket mine came loose when I went and blew it with air I was actually somewhat surprised at the amount of crap that came out of this vacuum cleaner. The level of dirt uh, retained in this thing is actually uh, quite unbelievable. I use a paintbrush to remove some of the more stubborn dirt that won't come out between the corners, some of the areas there, and then again with the air to remove that dirt that I've loosened with the brush. And there we are, it's looking nice and clean now. All of the accumulation and buildup inside has been removed from all the crevices. And while I wouldn't eat off of it, yeah, it's the inside of a vacuum cleaner. So it's not going to be uh, brand new squeaky clean, but all of that accumulation and buildup now gone from the unit. Before we start the reassembly process, I want to make sure that the gasket is correctly seated back in position. Before I move this plastic piece over, make sure there's no debris and it slides in there are some areas there push that wire back as well 
slides in where the screw holes are, seats all the way back into the unit. I'm going to be putting the screws back in now, hand tightening only, just to remove the slack from each screw. Once fully seated, I just give each screw like a sixteenth of a turn, that's it, just a, a little bit of snug after full seat, nothing more, it's plastic, so do not over tighten these. Now move on to the basket. For the basket, we'll bring it to the sink and just clean it under the spray hose with warm water. Not a whole lot to do here with this one. That just dry it off and that'll be it. Once the basket's completely dry, we can insert it back onto the vacuum cleaner. So what we're going to do now is we're going to line up the tracks on the bottom. And I'm going to turn it to the side here so we can see. And that little one tab is just going to click right in like that. I'm going to remove it again so we can hear it click again. Just like that. And we're going to close that top cover as we usually would. And then push it back in. There. Now it's fully assembled. I'm checking here and I'm noticing a little bit of difficulty. Some hesitation when opening up the basket. Seems a little bit stiff caused by the seal in the rear. I'm going to come back and address this in just a little bit. I'm going to clean and dress the rear gasket right quick. Uh, getting the outside with my finger and the inside with Q-tip. Less is more in this process. Should be just a really light coat, nothing more. It could very well be the front gasket though, and we're going to find out though by closing the entire basket without closing the front cap and then opening everything again. See how easily it opens. I'm going to open it with my thumb. No pressure at all whatsoever. Just slides right open with zero resistance. Go and do that again, and we could see that obviously it's the front gasket that's obstructing this thing from opening up. Right over here is where it's binding. It's going to have to lube over here on this O-ring uh, to fix that. We're going to do that now. Let's spray just a little bit of that lubricant and put it on the uh, inside of this O-ring. And just get all the surface area there. And once I finish, I'll just go and wipe up the excess and just put a little bit on the plastic on the inside as well and then once i finish with that we'll go and we'll test this out reopen it and close everything like normal now just with the thumb pops right open no resistance at all very nice do that again just a thumb amazing how easily it opens now if you've ever had trouble with yours binding, now you know how to fix that problem. Just like that. At this point, when you look at the rear of the unit, you should get this indication indicating that the filter is not in the unit. As to be expected, our next step will be the cleaning of the filter element. At this point, we're going to be ensuring the sink is running cold water, cold water only, so we don't shrink the cotton. And we're going to be using the sprayer mode. I have a sprayer in my sink to provide more force through the cotton filter and we're going to be cleaning the filter from the inside outward. The goal of course is to not push the dirt into the filter element. So from inside outward uh, I turn the filter uh, to loosen that dirt and this is going to go on for a while. Once it's loose I'll, I'll use another method to, to spray it off the surface but for now I just want to get it uh, loosened out of the element. You can see that as this process continues, I'm actually able to release chunks of dirt off the surface of the filter. At this point, I'm able to start hitting the matter on the surface of the filter, agitating it with the sprayer. It's all releasing now. We could uh, start to see the uh, imprint of the faucet on the filter becoming clearer each time as more dirt is removed. If you live somewhere like me where you have hot water, you're going to have to watch it one more time. Rinse everything off in filtered water to remove all of the hard water that's going to cause scale to build up between the fibers of the cotton. It's very important that you do this process and it shouldn't be overlooked. It will reduce the overall performance of the filter after you wash it several times. At 
and that filter looks brand new. It'll probably perform like brand new too now. At this point, we'll set the filter to air dry, and I mean air dry only, not the dryer, nothing like that. And it does take a day or two, maybe even three, depending on how much humidity you have. And then we'll just slap it right back in the vacuum cleaner. While we're waiting for the filter to dry, I don't think the anchors that they supplied for the mount for the charger is adequate for the weight of this unit. We could see that it's become loose in the wall. We're going to have to replace them. The screws proved to be a challenge to remove because they're spinning the anchors, so you have to pull back on the uh, unit to provide some force to get the anchor out as you turn it. These anchors are definitely worse for wear. Comparatively speaking, the new anchors are much more robust than the old ones. If you haven't installed yours yet, you might want to consider upgrading your anchors. If you have installed yours and you see that it's starting to get loose, this is something you may want to do now because it's definitely not going to improve over time. I do a quick inspection and cleaning of the non-powered peripherals, starting with the extension, looking at the electrical connections, making sure there's no obstruction, as well as any obstructions down in that pipe. I want to clear anything that's in there. Turn around, look from the other side, there's something there. Remove that really quick. What we're doing is we're trying to get to a place where we know that everything is in a good condition over a certain interval of time, that it doesn't go on for long periods of time where something's been obstructed and you just didn't know about it. We'll put that back down and we're gonna treat everything else here the same way. Checking for obstructions and dirt that's stuck in here so it could be removed. Go to the next piece. Also, anything that's caught within the brushes, we'll remove these brushes. They're all clean, though. They're regularly checked. I don't expect to find anything in them. Check these right quick. This one is hardly ever used. So I look in there, nothing. This one also rarely used. I find nothing in there. These, however, will be treated differently because they're the electric brushes. These power devices will be treated just like all the other peripherals, except for some exceptions, obviously. I'm going to turn it over, make sure the brush turns freely, that there's no obstruction or binding. And once that's been established, I'm going to go over to this side and take a coin. Turning this fastener just a little bit will allow that little plastic piece to come off the top. Now, there are a couple ways to remove this brush. You can unseat it just a little bit and pull it out from the bottom, as I'm going to do. It takes a little bit of work to unseat it sometimes. There we go. It's coming out. Pull it out from the top like I did. It could also come out from the side. Either way, I find it easier to pull it out from the top. I'll demonstrate both methods on reinstallation. And all I'm doing now is I'm just removing some of the debris from here. Obviously this brush is not uh, severely tangled and I'm just demonstrating I regularly maintain this equipment so you're not going to see any horror shows. Now we'll have a look at the electrical connector and check for any obstructions. The felt looks good. Everything looks nice. Everything looks like brand new actually. I'll push the brush through from the side and demonstrate this method. Twist the brush as I push it in, it's easier that way. Goes over that coupling for the motor, sort of screws on as it goes in. Now also demonstrate putting it through from the top, pushing outward a little bit, just like that. And then the same technique applies, just screwing it on as it goes in. Put the plastic cap back on the end. Finds its place and it falls in. I take the coin and I twist it clockwise to lock it back into position. Check to make sure that there's no binding on the brush. Everything looks brand new, perfectly clean, ready for service again. The torque drive head will be a similar procedure. I'm going to take a look and inspect it visually. There's a switch up front for the suction. Make sure that that's moving freely. As we turn it over, 
We'll make sure the electrical connector is unobstructed. Everything here is just fine. And then look inside, just like all of the other ones. Make sure there's no obstructions through the tube. The roller itself can be seen, everything behind the roller. Make sure the roller is moving freely and it's not binded. There's a rubber mat in the back. Make sure that's not broken or uh, anything damaged on it, as well as these little wheels up front. These wheels are also moving freely. There's nothing blocking that vent on the side. And this is the side where it opens again with the coin. We can see there's an indicator that shows which way to unlock it. I unlock it with the coin now. Cap won't come off on this one. This comes out as a complete unit. Sort of ease it to the right and slide the whole thing out just like that. This brush itself is uh, regularly maintained, so there's not a lot of stuff built up on here. But I remove anything that's caught between the bristles. Make sure that it spins freely. Look inside. Make sure there's nothing in there. Yeah, this one is just fine. So all cleaned up, I put it down. Bring my attention to this. And I could see uh, dust and matter has built up right here behind this seal. And that's going to need to be addressed with some canned air. See if I could blow that out. I use some canned air outside to remove that dust around the seal, but also this large amount of dust right over here was hidden, and I saved it here in the vacuum so you could see how much that was. This all bound up this dust and dirt behind this round plastic shroud, and I was able to pull that out as well. So now I slide the brush back in, sort of a spinning motion to get the brushes through till it fully seats at the end. Then I spin this end cap until it falls into place. We'll see right here where the flat spot is. It sort of sinks down right there in that position. And using the coin in the locking direction, I lock it till the flat spot is pointing down. Now I'll check for some binding here, make sure that it spins freely and everything does spin freely. And this portion of the maintenance for this torque drive head is now done. Through the magic of evaporation, the filter is dried. I also found it helpful. I put it in front of an air conditioner vent, sped things up just a little bit. As we would expect, pressing the button in the back tells us the filter's missing. We'll add that filter now to the back of the unit. In the moment that it clicks in, we can see that it's ready for normal operation again. And this vacuum cleaner is now ready for several more months of trouble-free, reliable service. So I hope you found this video informative, uh, educational, entertaining. Uh, click that like button down below and that subscribe button. Helps me out a lot when you do. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?